are here at our GDB Lux State of Mind custom build. This is the first of a number of videos that we're going to do for a video series on the construction of this house from beginning to end. So right now we're in the framing stage. We've got our foundation in, backfilled. Carpenters are here today setting first floor joists. So there's a few things that I want to go over uh, on this deck uh, to show you that we do a little bit different than some other builders around. So this particular foundation has a lot of reverse ledge. What I mean about reverse ledge is the foundation actually steps up higher than where the bottom of the joist bay is. To properly air seal that reverse ledge, we install ice and water shield underneath our bottom plate, bring it up and lap it over the top of our floor joist, and then our subfloor, which is inch and an eighth at Vantec, will sit down on top of that. Create a nice seal here, and then at that joint, we'll put our Sega tape, our Sega Fentrum tape, to get a proper air seal there, and then fold down our Sega WRB over that. So in this part of the foundation, we don't have a reverse ledge. We still brought our ice and water shield up for uniformity, and we'll actually lap down our WRB over this completely and tape this joint where our plate meets foundation. I like to mark out, communication is key. This is where our electric service will be. So we mark that on the foundation. And as you can see, this whole entire area has ice and water on that reverse ledge. This is actually a raised patio. So when we come out of the house, it'll only be a six inch one step down. And that's the top line of our foundation where the level of the patio will be. Another unique feature to this home is we have a deep sport court. Inside this section of the, the house, is actually a 22 foot deep basement. That's why we have some extra safety fence here, just so nobody takes a tumble over a 22 foot ledge. So this area will be our family room, which just sits above the sport court. To combat that noise that's gonna be produced in that sport court, this will all be soundproofed. This whole section, um, insulation will go underneath the floor in the ceiling. And we'll also have some sound, sound absorbing materials in the sport court itself. So you'll notice this section here has some concrete precast planks. Now the reason this is here is this section is actually a covered grill area. It still happens to be outside, it's not closed in, but underneath the grill itself, we wanted a solid concrete foundation and floor underneath it. So we have the planks. These concrete planks will get grouted to tie them in, and then there'll be a top coat of concrete that's poured here and throughout this covered porch, all in one plane. And then as we step into this section, this is pretty cool. This is actually where our in-ground pool is going to be. So we're gonna have a huge set of multi-slide patio doors which will lead out to a pool deck, and this section will be an in-ground pool. As you come out of the in-ground pool, we'll have a, a very wide set of stairs, basically this whole width, that steps down to the yard. So it'll be pretty cool. So on this covered porch area, it's basically gonna be an exterior living room. We're gonna have a, a set of couches and chairs, table, and a mason fireplace. And then along this back wall will be some um, indoor, outdoor, weatherproof cabinetry. And that's gonna create privacy from this room to the road, it'll block it. So as you can see here, we're just at the framing stage of the first deck. We don't even have our subfloor plywood on yet, which is inch and an eighth at Vantech. Um, we'll get you here to view the, the walls going up, uh, second floor deck and the roofing to really see this house uh, come to shape. So this section of the home is actually the front entry. And our front door does not face the front of the house. It's actually gonna be a pivot door and it's on a side profile. So we'll actually enter the house in this direction. And right here will be a huge set of picture windows that actually look through the house. You'll see the staircase and the two-story space. There's some really large windows in this house. They're from Marvin brand. Um, and we basically push the limits of the, the glass size that Marvin will allow. And it's just gonna be a real modern, 
open look. Wanted to show you guys what we use as far as subfloor. Obviously at Vantec, we've got all the bundles here, but this is not just your regular three quarter inch at Vantec. It's actually inch and an eighth. If you zoom in here, you'll see it's inch and an eighth thick. It's more expensive for sure, but it really does a great job at holding our subfloor steady and firm. Now you'll notice all our flooring joists are dimensional two by 12s. This is different from trusses or TJIs, the manufactured floor joists. The reason we use these is the municipality, actually the fire district, requires us to use dimensional lumber. And as we all know, dimensional lumber is not what it used to be 30, 40 years ago. You'll get some joists that are 11 and a quarter, 11 and a half to 11 and three quarters. We do all that planing as they set the joists in, but to make sure that the floor and the joists stay firm and steady, we use the inch and an eighth at Vantac because it holds the floor together a lot more firmly than a three quarter inch board. That ensures that we're gonna have a dead flat subfloor when we come back and install our hardwood flooring or our tile. All right guys, thanks for tuning in to our first episode of our video series, Lux State of Mind. We're making this video series in conjunction with Amy Storm and company. We just went through the initial stages of framing in our first floor deck. Join us for our next episode where we'll dive into some wall framing, some roof framing. We'll get into our Sega WRB and our air sealing tapes. It should be a fun episode. Take care, thanks.